Hey guys, thanks for tuning in and welcome back to Finnish Brutality 2023, day two, once again, brought to you by Varsteleka, the coolest military and outdoor supply store in all of Europe and that ships to the US. Now, we're going to jump right in to our sixth stage, first of five today. Uh, on top of a Finnish Patria APC, you have to draw your pistol, take down a couple of plates, and then a high value shot on the last popper. Uh, this, of course, means you pull the magazine, stow it. You then have one round in the pistol. Once you fire that one round, your pistol is absolutely empty, and you go ahead and reholster it, climb out the back of the vehicle with your rifle, and head over to the second challenge of the stage. This was a cool, challenge-dense stage. Uh, second challenge is a rope climb. It's not a particularly tall rope. Like, actually, it's a pretty darn short rope, but a surprising number of people were not able to climb it in gear. I did get up that thing without too much trouble there. Then we go to the third challenge of the stage, which is a rifle spinner at about 50 yards. Now I'm running a G3 with an ACOG here, and that will make this a pretty darn easy uh, shooting challenge. So you can't see the spinner from this angle, but I hit the top plate and then I hit the bottom plate and it goes over with 308 and only takes two hits, which was fantastic, especially compared to all the people saddled with 556 on this stage. Now, there are two silhouettes and a small plate hanging at the end of the range. You have to stand on the tire. You can't touch the ground. I chose to kneel here, which was not the best solution. Uh, hit each place twice, plate twice, and then again, a high value shot on the small target. So I only have one shot to do this with. I should have sat down, butt on the tire, and braced on my knees. I did not. I'm going to take plenty of time setting up the shot, trying to be really careful to make a hit only to miss. So that was a 60 second penalty, sadly. Run, 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 run. Now I have to run back through the obstacle course or across the obstacle course from yesterday's Casarda drill uh, to the beginning of the stage where there is a set up stage rifle. Uh, this is a Sako 338. There are three rounds in the magazine and I have to hit each of the three targets at the end of the bay with it. So these are now 150 meter shots they're still pretty easy with this rifle, um, and for a 338, it shot pretty nicely, pretty softly. There's a really big break on it. Uh, the bipod was a bit low. I really kind of had to scrunch myself down in order to, to get a clear shot, but I was able to make all three hits without any real problem. This was a fun one. Lots of challenges. Small one is hard. Did you get it? No. Uh, I got everything else. Two hits on the spinner. Good job. Got the Two rope. Two hits on the spinner. Stop and bottom. Bottom, go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got nice. The, up the rope. Uh, there was there was a guy uh, that commented on one of our videos like, why the hell would you want to use a 308 in this kind of match? Oh, that's why. That's why. Yeah. Two shots, you get the spinner. It actually is a very good um, advantage. Yeah. Next, of course, we get right back into breacher exercises, one after every stage. These are you know, three to 10 minute, three to five minute physical challenges just to wear you out and make everything harder. So this is all done in full kit. I'm wearing somewhere between 25 and 30 pounds of gear, from rifle plates to water to ammo, mags, etc. And uh, we took the sandbags that we filled up at the end of yesterday's session, and you have to throw one of them somewhere on your shoulder. You could carry it over both like I am or over just one shoulder, or you could hold it in your hands, however you want it. Just have to carry a sandbag and do as many squats as you can in three minutes. So once again, I figured squats are something I ought to be fairly decent at, uh, but they still tire you out pretty darn good uh, after a couple minutes straight with weight. So uh, as usual, far better than last year's recon division running. So I'm, I'm partnered up with Giga from Polyonar Tactical here. Uh, he's counting for me and, well, he has just finished where I counted for him, now he's counting for me. So I'm able to do these fairly consistently all the way through the, the allotted time. I slowed it, obviously slow down a bit at the end here, but some good motivation from Giga. Almost done. And there we go, last one. Good times, good times. Good fucking job. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Yeah. Not too bad. Not bad at all. Says the guy who did 70. How are your knees right now? Knees are good. Thighs are a little uh, 
little Bernie. Yeah, okay. <sighs> Still so much better than running. <laughs> all right, stage seven, all duffel bags look the same. This is the, uh, this is an evil, evil sort of stage. The one where there is a physical challenge combined with a shooting challenge. And instead of having a set number of things you have to do and the fastest person wins, instead, you run for the entire three minute par time. That, by the way, is the maximum time you're allowed to spend on any stage in the match, three minutes. So if you haven't completed the stage in three minutes, you stop and get a penalty for whatever you haven't completed. Except for stages like this one, where you just go for three straight minutes. So I got a couple hits from the truck, then I jump off and I have to shoot uh, hit each of the plates twice through the tire and then each of the plates twice offhand from that position. Then I come here and I take three weighted duffel bags and these are I think about 50 pounds each, about 20 something kilo, and you throw them in the truck. Pretty simple, pretty basic sort of stage. Grab the rifle and go back and repeat the shooting tasks. So. Uh, hit both of the plates here. That tire is very deliberately positioned pretty darn low. Um, it's worth pointing out, I had a bipod with me for the entire match and I literally never ended up actually using it because all the prone positions like that one were just too low for the bipod to have been of any use. Anyway, I need to make two hits on each target here, standing, or I'm sorry, one hit each standing, and I get back and what's this? All the duffel bags I had thrown in the truck are now back on the ground because while I'm out shooting, one of the ROs is up in the truck, pushing all the sandbags back out. So the deal here is you simply repeat this process until you run out of time. Uh, make your hits under the tire, make your hit standing, throw the sandbags back in the truck. And uh, <laughs> the intent is for it to be a bit demoralizing that every time you turn around and come back to the truck, the sandbags are right back out on the ground again. And by the way, that truck is a Sisu uh, uh, Finnish military truck, and it's got a really quite high bed to it. Um, I had a pair of coupled mags here because I knew I was going to go more than 20 rounds total. Uh, those coupled mags allow me to have a little bit of a faster reload. Uh, also, for some strange, uh, m mysterious way, gravity appears to have gotten stronger over the course of this stage. Those sandbags really seem to weigh a lot more when you get towards the end than they do at the beginning. Now, when it comes to scoring, you got a bonus for every hit that you made on target. And the way it worked out essentially was um, the, the steps in people's scores are primarily how many times they were able to cycle through and throw the sandbags up. Uh, so I ended up in a 41 position tie for basically middle of the pack here. Um, I was able to uh, get all those hits and then I'm able to actually get all the sandbags back in the truck one more time, but I don't have time to go make another hit. So. Score, score comes out the same as people who didn't get the sandbags in that last time. There we go. Uh, I love these stages. They're they're demoralizing and awful, but really pretty excellent. The next breacher is really one of the other quite simple ones. This is the Bangalore push. We have a birch tree log here as a quote unquote Bangalore torpedo, and you simply have to crawl it down uh, this this path and then throw it across the log at the end. And it's a timed event. Uh, fastest person wins. I had some rocks. Fortunately, I had really good knee pads in my Varastaleka combat pants. So that wasn't a problem. Uh, just barely behind Giga on that one. Good work, good work, all the way through. All the way to the end. Get up there. Get those damn archers there was one stage each day that I really did pretty poorly on. Uh, the first day, it was the stage with the minefield, of course, where I stepped on a mine and died. On the second day here, it was this stage. It looks very simple on paper. There are two VTAC barricades. You have to make two hits from each port on the very bottom of this barricade. Targets are not particularly small, not particularly hard to see. Then engage the safety on your rifle and crawl under this barbed wire. And the barbed wire really isn't particularly low. It's just at that height where crawling on all fours is difficult because you're getting caught in the wire like I was. Um, a lot of rocks on that path, but, you know, whatever. You're just crawling through it. 
uh, you then have to make four hits from this side, from the uh, holes in the VTAC that require you to stand up a bit more. Then gauge the safety, go back, and repeat. Uh, and you do this until you've got, I believe it's 20 hits. So it's five total uh, sets of shooting, uh, four crawls under the barbed wire. And I just kind of went slowly on this. Uh, nothing specifically went wrong. I didn't have any malfunctions. I didn't have any problems. It just... This one just kind of ground me into, well, the ground uh, and was definitely one of my worst uh, stages of the match. So a lot of what this comes down to is like personal determination, mental stamina. Um, this is one of those things where Breacher really does take it out of you. We've done a number of exercises today, plus everything we did yesterday. Everybody is sore and hurting and tired at this point. And it's a question of how well can you push through and just keep going, even though it hurts and it's uncomfortable. Uh, and frankly, this is one of the reasons reasons why Giga from Polinar Tactical won the match overall. Certainly a lot of other people were able to push, but Giga seems to be physically incapable of not pushing himself 100%. And that's something that I need to work on myself, uh, as well as not getting my backpack caught on the barbed wire like I did there. So here we go, last crawl. I'm just kind of trudging my way through this on all fours. A uh, couple final hits, and we'll be on our way. Uh, I did have a little bit of an issue of the ACOG kind of popping me in the glasses here. The sight box, it's got a fairly short eye relief, and the sight box is such that to get, to get down on these low targets was a little tricky. Whew, that was a lot harder than I expected it to be. <sighs> We've all seen the exercise thing of hitting a tire with a hammer. Uh, the twist on it for this Breacher Evolution was you're hitting it sideways. This is a tire hit for distance. You have a total of uh, three minutes, sorry, two minutes, to move that tire as far as you can with a sledgehammer. And it's really a bit demoralizing hitting a rubber tire with a sledgehammer because the hammer really kind of likes to bounce off of it. So uh, what I found here is the best technique was to sort of swing my whole body in, try to minimize the bounce and put all of the energy into moving the tire. And actually, I really did pretty darn well at this one. Uh, a lot of energy into each swing, right technique, and it worked fairly well. One more minute. <laughs> Many a time left. 30 seconds. Many hits left. Go, go, go. Don't give up. 10, Ease. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, One more good one. Sucked. But I did really good at it. Hey, Shiga! Better than running? Oh, I think you dropped something. <laughs> so much better than running. So uh, we lost a challenge here, so we have to take a shot of hot sauce before running the stage. Jenny's finding the biggest one here, I think. Yeah, I think uh, this has the most. All right, as an official Arizona hot sauce connoisseur. Yeah, wait for the arrow. I will wait for the RO. Shooter, are you ready to take shots? Yes, I am. Please do. Starting position. Way too vinegary. Yeah. Yeah. All right, one of the other stages that has started to become a, a regular thing at Finnish Brutality is a blind memory stage. So we did not get to walk through this stage before we started it. And what's going to happen here is I carry the weights just to give me kind of something physical to do at the beginning. I'm going to flip over one of these boards and memorize the letters on it. We were told they would be alphanumeric characters. And I flip it back over and I'm not allowed to look at it again for the rest of the stage. Now, I have to keep those letters and numbers, M, 7, N, in mind while I first engage a pistol spinner. So the intention here is it is a relatively difficult shooting engagement and it's going to steal my focus. And if I'm not careful, I'm gonna forget exactly what those letters and numbers were. 
Now on the next couple of bays, after I finish the pistol spinner here, there will be targets that are marked with, well, going into it, I don't know what they're going to be marked with. I just know that they will somehow correspond to the target package that I flipped over and memorized. And I have to engage the targets that match the panel that I flipped over, targets that match my target package. Any hits on other targets will be penalties. Now, I have a little bit of trouble here with the brightness setting on the dot. Um, I was in bright and the target was in the dark and there was a nice thin film of dust on both lenses. So I got the spinner over, but it took me longer and more shots than it should have. Oh, we do have fire here to contend with as well. And that's pretty real fire. That thing was quite toasty hot. So I get in here and I'm trying to figure out what exactly the targets are. Um, they each have sort of words, call signs, letters uh, written with each target. Unfortunately, it, the video isn't close enough for you to see them, but um, two of the four have either M, N, or seven included in the, the word or phrase that's written above the target. So what I have to do is pick those and engage them. It's a, a fun mental challenge because nobody knew what this would be going into it. Um, the one malfunction I had with the pistol throughout this match, by the way, was it not locking open on empty magazines, which you saw happen right there. Anyway, I have successfully cleared those two. Fire is definitely spicier than the kind of mediocre hot sauce, but what do you expect for hot sauce in, well, Scandinavia, the Nordics, not Scandinavia, Finland and the Nordics, they don't really do hot sauce, and we in Arizona do. Anyway, I move back to the final bay, and I have the same sort of challenge. There's a word or sort of word, number, word, call sign conglomeration on each target. Now that I know what I'm looking for, this one's pretty easy. Drop all four, and there we go. I did pretty well with this one. That's clear. Hammer down, and please be careful not to drop the gun. <laughs> Thank you. It is a sig. It doubles as a hand grenade. Time, one, six, four, flat. Yeah. Nothing like a good SIG joke. Anyway, it wouldn't be breacher division if we didn't do any actual breaching. And so on this one, they took the fence that we were vaulting over the previous day, took out the middle panel, and each person got a two by four screwed to the panel, which you then get to break with a sledgehammer. And boards don't really break this way. Now, Giga managed to break it in three hits back there. Uh, there were a couple of people who got it in sub 10 seconds. I was not one of them. so. Part of the problem I have here is my accuracy is garbage with this hammer, and I spent a lot of time actually hitting the board with the end of the handle instead of the head of the hammer itself. And once I got that fixed, I still managed to kind of hit it sometimes too high, sometimes too low. But once I started getting some good solid hits into it, I started making good progress. There's a 2,500 round case of 32 French long on the other side. <laughs> All right, there we go. It's breaking. Come on. There we go. Yeah. One more hit. One more good hit. Good job. Yeah. Woo. Good job, Ian. Oh. All right, one last stage. And this stage is really very typical. The, the layout is very typical of a brutality match sort of stage. So we have a shooting challenge combined with a physical challenge. In this case, we have four pistol targets. The far ends are little tiny hanging plates and the middle two are larger plates, but they're partially obscured by poppers. The poppers are no shoots. So if you knock one of them down, that's a 60 second penalty. And as you traverse across and back the stage, every time you go under the bar, you have to toss that sandbag over the top of the bar. So. Uh, you know, this combines a little bit of a strenuous physical activity with your shooting. So your shooting may be great. How is it after you toss that, that sandbag a couple of times? Well, for me, the answer was pretty darn good. I'm very happy with how I did here. I'm, I mean, this is the sort of thing that I've done a fair amount of, and I'm pretty decent at. The red dot and pistol worked really quite well for me here. Didn't have any problems. Uh, and it was just a matter of back and forth a number of times. In fact, I managed to shoot this stage completely clean, not a single miss anywhere. So very happy with that. This was a 
a good stage to sort of round out and end the match on. Um, we were kind of fortunate where with our squatting that we got to do the, the really hard stages first, the Casarda drill, the rope climb, uh, were both first day stages for me. And I like it that way, do those while I've got some energy and then finish out with a uh, fairly mecha uh, mechanistic stage like this one. Good job. Unload and show clear. All right. So that is it for the shooting. We have one more breacher challenge left, and that one is kind of a, uh, well, that one's sort of a, a roll, wrap it all up together for fun, uh, not timed event. So, yeah, yeah, I'm pretty happy with this. All right, we have one final breacher evolution, and this is really more of a wrap it up teamwork exercise it's not a scored thing at all and that is log pt so this is again a finnish military thing it's also a kind of i think an everywhere military thing so we're in teams of three i had the pleasure of being teamed up with yari ceo of Arastaleka, and giga from polinar tactical so this this went about 10 minutes and uh it seems like it's a good opportunity for me to come up with some conclusions for the overall match so First off, with my scores, I ended up placing 75th out of 156, so slightly above the 50th percentile. Uh, I would normally like to do a bit better than that. And in fact, <laughs> the huge factor behind that score is my landmine uh, mishap. That actually set me back something like 40 places. I would have been in the just calculating from the penalties I took on that stage. I would have been somewhere in the low 30s instead of the low to mid 70s uh, had that had I not made that mistake. So that just goes to show you the tragic consequences of stepping on landmines, I suppose. I did pretty well in Breacher as well. Um, 22 out of 34 people. I'm pretty okay with. Uh, a lot of the people at Finnish Brutality are very fit, very skilled. Uh, a lot of active duty military as well as reserve military there. A lot of people who are a bit younger than me. So I'm, I'm very happy to have just survived and, and held my own. And uh, scoring 22nd out of 34 is just fine by me. And that said, the scores are really sort of a secondary thing uh, for me for brutality matches. This is a place, yeah, obviously I like to do really well on the scores, but I'm primarily competing against myself. Um, can I meet my own expectations? Can I do better than, uh, you know... <laughs> can tomorrow me kick the ass of yesterday's me, that sort of thing. So one of the great things about uh, brutality matches is the camaraderie, the, the friendliness, everyone at these matches is there to have a good time. They're there to challenge themselves and everyone's very supportive of everyone else in the match. And it makes for a really outstanding experience. You certainly saw that with Breacher this year where we were all doing it together and we we're all absolutely cheering each other on, even though it is a competitive event, you know, it's, if, if someone else comes in first, I come in second, that kind of thing. But that certainly didn't stop anyone from doing their utmost to cheer everybody on to, to do the best that they possibly could. Um, Shiga's a fantastic example of that. He was highly motivational for me uh, and, and ended up taking first place in the match overall. It's really extremely impressive. In fact, one of the unusual things about Finnish Brutality this year is the top rankings in the scores were actually remarkably close excuse me, remarkably close together. Normally, uh, the, the top few places are pretty well spaced out. And this year, there was something like 20 seconds between the top eight or so competitors. And that's really pretty unusual for brutality matches. Uh, the key, by the way, if you want to do well on the scores in a brutality match, the keys are don't par out on any of the stages and don't have any penalties. And if you can pull off those two things, you're generally going to be in the top five or 10% just to begin with. So uh, I, I have yet to ever pull that off, but that continues to be my goal. So lessons learned um, from a fitness perspective, from the, the breacher stuff, I need to do more push-ups. Um, I need to do more exercise with weight on if I want to do better at that, which I do want to do better at that next year when I'm sure it will return. Um, from a just general perspective, the thing, I think I already mentioned this, the thing that holds me back the most compared to other people, uh, other people that I'm, you know, losing to, is I think often 
just personal motivation, the will to keep pushing even when things really hurt and you could really settle down to like an 80% effort level and, and maintain a nice easy pace through it versus pushing yourself 100% all the way through the end of the stage. And that's something that Giga does. And that's something that I aspire to do. That's something I need to work on myself. So very much an element of finished Sisu there. Um, from a shooting perspective, I've mentioned this, I've, I've recommended this to other people before, but uh, with brutality matches, I think one of the most relevant skills, aside from just basic marksmanship, being able to hit your target, is being able to quickly acquire a target. One of the things that's very deliberate about the, develop, the design of brutality matches is there are very few repeat engagements of the same target. So you may have to engage you know, two hits on each of these two targets, but you're not allowed to double tap the targets. You have to shoot target one, then target two, then target one, then target two. And that was very deliberately done to maximize the training potential uh, and the practice potential of getting the maximum number of new target engagements because it's a harder skill to move to a target settle the sights on it and fire an accurate shot than it is to just bring the sights back onto a target that you already fired on. So um, just the time that it takes to bring your sights on target and fire a shot, that can really add up even over the course of a relatively small, relatively low round count brutality stage. And that's something that I really need to improve myself. I feel like there's too much uh, time spent like letting the sight settle on target and making a trigger press. So that's, of course, important to make an accurate shot, but it's something that I want to improve upon. When it comes to gear, uh, pretty much everything I had worked pretty well. Um, Leica's low visibility plate carrier was as comfortable as armor, I think, could legitimately be. It didn't really get in my way anywhere. Um, I was able to stow three 7.62 NATO magazines on the front, which is a little bit of a squeeze, but they fit. Um, the Varsteleika um, combat gear, the, the pants, shirts, the clothing was all excellent. Their combat shirts are great. Their pants are great. The integrated knee pads neither got in my way nor shifted out of the way when I was trying to use them. And after having gotten home and you know thrown everything through the wash, there is a remarkably complete lack of serious wear on, on even the elbows and the knees of those pieces. So very durable equipment very durable clothing. Um, I'm using Aku boots that I've been using for years. They're great. They're extremely comfortable. Um, I've used them everywhere from Finland to volcanoes in the Solomon Islands. So uh, I would highly recommend those. If, if they fit you and you like them, absolutely go for them. Really good brand. Uh, the G3 and the pistol will have a little more follow-up video content about, but essentially they both did very well for me. I had no particularly serious concerns uh, or problems with them. Considering stage design and, and general match design, I thought this was probably the best brutality match that I've been to yet. Um, the stages had a really good mix of interesting elements, everything from the minefield, which I thought was a really intriguing idea. And even though it, it hit me and utterly obliterated my scores, uh, I strongly encouraged Diari to keep that element uh, in consideration for future matches. I think it was really good, and I think it would be fun to see other people uh, use in matches as well. Like The idea that it, it's kind of like the 60-second penalties in brutality matches. There, The idea is there are some things that are extremely important, and if you screw them up, you're going to and deservedly pay a really high price for it, like, you know, stepping on a landmine. So that was cool. Um, the live casualty actor and the prosthetic and the fake blood in the medic stage was awesome. The pyrotechnics for the car were awesome. That was in a blind stage. People didn't know what that fire was until they got in there. And I think a lot of people expected it to be visuals only like, oh, that's cute. It looks like fire. It'll be neat on camera. When in reality, that sucker was hot. There was a lot of heat Just coming off of that car. And it really gave you something else to think about when you ran around the corner there. So the memory stage was great. Um, and overall, I think Breacher was a fantastic addition that was well-balanced and did exactly what it was supposed to. So this is officially the end of Finnish Brutality 2022. I hope you enjoyed it. This is super awesome. Way better than running. I love it. So pay close attention. That is all.